Can I ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and to remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by explorer Nor Shell Puddle. It will be followed by the invocation of our department chaplain, Reverend Maiello. from the scriptures. St. Paul spoke to Timothy he said, I already said first of all that request, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and for all those who are in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. May God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our God and our Father, whose hands rule the wind and the waves, and who has sent the planets in their courses, we come reverently into your presence. We rever the mighty works of your hands and the wondrous wisdom and saving power of your words. Father God, we honor all our deceased police officers today of the Tuckahoe Police Department and throughout our land. We give thanks to them by taking this time to remember their faithful service to our community. Today we pray a special prayer for their loved ones, that you would give them peace, comfort, help them to remember that this separation is only temporary. But one day, we can all be united together in your kingdom where there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, and you'll wipe away all the tears. Father God, we continue to pray for our law enforcement officers. 
not only because you command us to, but because you have ordained them to protect us and because they risk their lives daily and out of love, we should always lift them up in prayer. Help these officers trust in you in all things and for all things, because your word says, they that trust in the Lord should be a Mount Zion which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Help them to remember that you will always be there for them. And when they are in trouble, they can call on your signal, 1013. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 13, for all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, let them know how important it is that they draw near to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, that you desire for all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, let them know no matter how bad things look or how dark things may seem, that they have the victory through Lord to our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, as St. Paul stated when he spoke to the Corinthians, we say this in prayer to our police officers today. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, Father, I ask you a, to put a special blessing on this ceremony as you make your presence known. And I pray this to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Nora, for that beautiful rendition. I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2022 Annual Remembrance Ceremony. Every year, America sets aside the week of May 15th to salute the men and women of law enforcement who do the difficult, dangerous, and often thankless job of safeguarding their communities. During Police Week, we celebrate those who protect and serve their communities every day. We especially remember those Courageous officers who devoted themselves fully to others and in the process laid down their lives. Since our last police memorial service, 525 police officers across the country have made the ultimate sacrifice. They were fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and friends. We remember these men and women and those sacrifices they made. Chief Costanzo, for a few remarks. Thank you, Sergeant Pinto. Reverend Maiello, our elected officials, families of our deceased members, retired members of the Tucko Police Department, Chief Tim Bonsi of the Eastchester Police Department, Lieutenant Joe Rodriguez, the Bronx Police Department Chief Stephen Erie, Chief Brian Downey, from the East Chester Fire Department Chief Brian Tween, retired Chief Michael Grogan, and Commissioner Anthony Glory. Our veterans and all of our guests, welcome. Thank you all for joining us this morning to pay tribute to all the officers of the Tucko Police Department who have passed on, as well as all the men and women in law enforcement have given the ultimate sacrifice to the protection of others. I am pleased that we have not added, added a name to our monument this year, so it allows me to speak about the history of the monument and all the fine traditions of this department. In 1990, under, the, under Chief Walter Crawford and then Lieutenant Gerard Mignon's leadership, and in partnership with the PBA, planning for this monument began including the artist's artists task of gathering the names of all those serving back to 1903. That task was given to a Detective Henry Bellis, who spent hundreds of hours researching so that no one was left out. I want to acknowledge Detective Bellis. He's here today, and he's the most senior uh, member of our retired court. So. The monument was designed using the same black marble used for the National Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. The granite used was 
donated by the Garganza Brothers from their quarries in Yonkers, in Georgia. Two local stonemasons, Fred Colangelo and Luigi Rogliano, donated their time and talent to build this beautiful monument. And my dad, Rocco Costanzo, the plant was around. It was through all their collective hard work and generosity that this magnificent memorial stands today and where we come together each May since 1991 to honor our deceased. From that first service 31 years ago, we've been blessed to have the support of our elected officials, neighboring police departments, first responders, clergy, buglers, vocalists, <coughs> explorers, and our number one supporters, our veterans. As I am the last active link to 1991 is our veterans who are part of that tradition, who have served our country and our community and have come to this ceremony bringing dignity to all the services. So thank you to our veterans especially. <laughs> One of the greatest honors that I've enjoyed these past 19 years as chief has been to memorialize fallen members at this service, 22 in total. In the early years, I spoke about members, and I relied on looking through personnel records and speaking with retired members to learn about them. But as time went on, more and more, I spoke about chiefs who hired, promoted, and mentored me, lieutenants and sergeants who supervised and trained me, and police officers who worked alongside me. Every one of them contributed in one way or another in making me the police officer, sergeant, lieutenant, and chief that I became. I learned from all of them, and hopefully passed along some of the fine traditions that I acquired to those who followed. That is the great history of this department, the passing of the torch of excellent policing from member to member, generation to generation. A little later in the program, when the final roll call is read, let us remember that they are not just names. They are sons, brothers, fathers, uncles, and friends. Part of a brotherhood who sacrificed and dedicated their lives in the service and protection of others. The men and women of today's department, standing in formation to our rear, to your rear, exemplify all that is good in policing. And I am extremely proud of each and every one of them, and truly honored to be their chief. Thank you to Sergeant Vincent Pinto for all your hard work in putting this ceremony together. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our mayor, the Honorable Omira Quayle. Good morning, everyone. I'm not feeling great, and I went to see my doctor, and he said, everything is not COVID, because that's what I thought I had. Um, thankfully, I don't. I want to thank everyone who is here this morning to recognize and acknowledge those who served on our police department, uh, the, to the families who are here and those who are not. My heart goes out to you. Um, and I want to thank our police department, our VFW who's here, and our veterans, as well as the fire department. And I'd like to recognize some elected officials and partners in government. We have our county executive here, George Latimer, our county legislator, Damon Marr, and we have our Eastchester board, county, uh, the board, <coughs> town supervisor, Tony Colavita, and council people, I believe I saw Sheila Marcotte and Joe Dooley. I'm not sure if anyone else is here. If you are, please stand. <laughs> and of course, our village board, who is here, our deputy mayor, Renee Howell, and trustees Taylor, Cronin, and newly elected Engelbert. Welcome to the first memorial cer ceremony. Uh, the, the true measure and success of any community can be seen in its, in its police department. And I could say that looking at ours, we are truly a successful community. I have seen our police department not only protect and serve, but they've also served as counselors, as supporters and encouragers to residents in the community. They give of themselves selflessly on many occasions that I've witnessed. And I just want to acknowledge the chief's leadership 
in that because it takes leadership to have a department that serves in that way. So thank you all for being here and let's just remember those who have fallen. Thank you very much, Mayor and Chief. Westchester County Executive George Latimer. Thank you very much, Sergeant Chief. Uh, to the men and the women of the Takaho Police Department, uh, it was 10 years ago that I attended this ceremony for the first time. And absent COVID, uh, it's something I look forward to each year as a chance to honor the men and women who serve us today in the police force in Tuckahoe, those that have served and retired, and those that we've lost over the years. Uh, I am the grandson of a Harrison police officer. My wife is the granddaughter of a Rye police officer. He made it up to sergeant. Uh, there was some promotion in the family. And uh, I know, um, although I didn't have a chance to see either of them in their active years, I know exactly what it was like to be part of a police family where uh, you, you worry. Every night you worry a little bit. And even in these suburban communities, people think it's not the same <laughs> as NYPD, but at any given moment, any given call, your life could be at risk as you put your life in the way of uh, those of us as civilians. So we appreciate that service. And this community, perhaps more than most, really do take that to heart. This ceremony and the things that happen over the course of the year. And those of us in elective office and those of us in the community at large really do appreciate what this police department does and in general at the county level of government. We fully fund the police. We want the county police to be a good backup and assistance to the Tucker Police and the Bronxville Police. I hope we are. And uh, to try to be there when you need us in any way possible because you are there and we need you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Westchester County Legislator of the 10th District, David Morris, here. If I could have uh, Eastchester Town Supervisor, Tony Calavita. Good morning, everyone. Chief Bonsi, Chief Costanza. Men and women of the Eastchester, Tuckahoe, and Bronxville Police Departments, Reverend Maiello, fellow elected officials, veterans, friends, and family members of our officers, on behalf of the entire town board and all of the residents of this entire town, I want to express our profound gratitude and appreciation for the necessary work you men and women perform on a daily basis to ensure the safety of each of us. And to our officers present here today, during these recent times, with all the craziness going on in this country regarding crime and policing, you may feel unsupported, you may feel disrespected, you may not feel appreciated or valued, you may see offensive acronyms against you. When you hear calls to defund you or to weaken your ability to do your job or to put you at greater risk of harm, when you learn about bail reforms, revolving door justice, early release of prisoners, selective enforcement by DAs, when you feel overwhelmed or a little uncertain, know unequivocally and without any reservation that we support you. We support you 100%. The vast majority of residents support you 100%. That we have your back. That you are not alone doing your job. That we respect and value what you do to protect us 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Thank you, St. Michael, pray for you. Thank you, sir. If I could have the Explorer Advisor, P.O. Brian Madden, to present the Chief Gerard A. Mignon Memorial Scholarship on behalf of the Generoso Pope Foundation. Chief Gerard A. Mignon Memorial Scholarship is presented annually to an explorer who displays the core values of leadership, honesty, and dedication to their community. 
These are the qualities which Chief Mignon embodied throughout his 37 years of service to the village of Taco. Chief Mignon placed the highest emphasis on community policing, as well as youth outreach programs such as our Explorer Post. This year's recipient of the Chief Gerard A. Mignon Memorial Scholarship has been a dedicated member of the Explorer Post since joining in 2018, and has since worked his way up to the rank of Sergeant. This recipient is well respected amongst his peers, as shown by his ability to recruit new members to our program each year. We'd now like to acknowledge this year's recipient of the Chief Gerard A. Mignon Memorial Scholarship, Louis Chiavetta. Please come forward. Retired police officer Vito DiRienzo and explorer Rivera to present the wreaths at the memorial. Thank you. Police Officer Peter Costa for the last roll call. Detail. Hut and hut. Patrolman Frank Hagedorn. Patrolman Edward Carey. Chief William J. Simpkins. Patrolman John J. McGuire Jr. Chief Henry W. Foreman, Sergeant John F. Dalton, Patrolman Herbert B. Riesdorf, Chief Norman L. Booker, Chief Michael B. Pinto, Sergeant Milton A. Gibbons, Sergeant Patrick Bradley, Sergeant Charles J. Bucchioni, Sergeant Gennaro C. Mara. Patrolman Michael Mizuchi. Patrolman Joseph Retrovado. Patrolman Ralph A. Fumarelli. Patrolman Joseph Perillo. Patrolman George Avak Sr. Chief John C. Bova. Chief Albert E. Spencer. Chief Jack Eagleglentis. Sergeant James Barletta, Lieutenant Oscar Granite, Sergeant William Tucker, Sergeant William C. Tenza Sr., Sergeant John Francone, Chief Henry W. Norman Jr., Patrolman Dominic Sassinelli. Lieutenant Joseph C. Yancey Sr. Patrolman George Davis. Patrolman Frank Pellegrino. Patrolman Donald E. Reed. Patrolman Nicholas Babbage. Patrolman Alphonse Sassinelli. Chief Gerard A. Mignon. Sergeant Walter J. Small. Lieutenant John Yorkander. Chief Walter E. Crawford, Patrolman John Arrigo, Patrolman Clement P. Martone Jr., Patrolman Matthew R. Walsh, 
Sergeant Robert W. Sable, Patrolman Richard R. Spada. Detail, peace and arms! Reverend Maiello for the benediction. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our God and our Father, once again, we come before you with holy reverence. Now, Lord, as we leave and close this service, we pray for all our police officers, <coughs> and all our first responders. We ask you, Lord, to place a mighty hedge of protection around them. Surround them with a legion of angels as they risk their lives to protect, serve, and save the lives of people in our community. To all our family members who lost their loved ones, we pray that you have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And I leave you with a word from the great prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. And now let us close by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hurry, rest! Chief Costanza. Before we conclude the ceremony and Sergeant Pinto does his final remarks, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, our friendship and partnership with Chief Timothy Bonsi. Chief Bonsi will be retiring after more than 40 years of service to the Chester Police Department. We will be great partnership we relied on him and his department as we have for decades and uh, you know a friendship that we will never forget and we always appreciate and grateful for and of course to Lieutenant Joe Rodriguez who will be taking over the helm sworn in this Tuesday we wish him nothing but the best of luck and continued cooperation thank you families and friends who attended today's ceremony to pay their respects to a loved one and for your continued support. 
Although we are blessed to not have added any names to our memorial this year, it does not take away from those names we have added in the past. To the families gathered here today, remembering a loved one, we shall honor and remember your loved one every year. Thank you to the East Chester and Tuckahoe veterans who year after year continue to service their community and support this department. Please continue to remember our veterans and active duty military in your thoughts and prayers. Please also pray for the safety of all law enforcement officers. Thank you to the public officials for your services, as well as your thoughtful remarks. Thank you to Nora for singing our national anthem, Reverend Maiello, Elliot Maldonado for helping us set up, Nikki Cachola, Martine's Bakery in Crestwood for the refreshments, and all the members of the Tucko, East Chester, and Bronxville Police Department, as well as the Fire Department. This concludes today's ceremony. Please stay after to join us for some refreshments. Detail. Up, here. Up.